this looks a lot more complicated than it is. What is it? True serum? No, nothing as dramatic as that. True serum's only for detective stories, I'm afraid. No, this is just something I hope you relax while we talk and try to get at the problem that bothers you. Just lie down. Okay. Now, this won't hurt. You'll be fully conscious, but you'll be relaxed. Now, clench your fist. That's good. There. That wasn't bad, was it? No. Just let yourself relax. How do you feel? I feel fine. I feel fine. You're fine. Why is that funny, Mary? I have no right to feel fine. I have to pay for what I did. So close your eyes, Mary. And what is it you have to pay for? For what I did. For two weeks. Two whole weeks. What about the two weeks? We'll be married. He got two weeks leave. We'll be married. Who did? Bill. After his commission, they're giving him two weeks leave before he ships out. So quick. So quick. Congratulations on your commission. <laughs> well, seriously, why didn't you tell me just to call me from rehearsal like that? I, I have to go right back. I'm on the air in two and a half hours. You're not going back. We're getting married instead. Look, darling, I've got it all arranged. I have two weeks leave before I ship out, and we're going to stay right here at the tower. Oh, at first I thought maybe we'd spend our honeymoon in Yosemite or Carmel. I've only got two weeks. I don't want to see scenery. I just want to see you. What are you talking about? Getting married. And look, afterwards, you're going to spend time with my family in Richmond while I'm overseas. Look, drink up. We'll have lunch, get married. Bill, are you serious? Um. Well, we can't. I mean, not now. I have the show to do. Oh, Bill, you do everything so quickly and so impulsively. Besides, I couldn't live with your family across the bay. I have my job here, and I, and I couldn't... Look, you won't have to work. We'll be married. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, I thought you'd like my family. I do. Oh, I think they're the most wonderful people in the world, but... We've only been out together seven times. Once was enough for me. So you went ahead, and you made all these arrangements without even talking to me or asking but me You about said you loved me. I thought that was enough. I've spent weeks planning just how I'd surprise you. Well, I guess I surprised you all right. Not the way I thought I would. Bill, I do want to marry you. More than anything in the world, and I, I want to belong to a family like yours, but not this way. Not so quickly. Look, we've only got two weeks. I can't afford to waste any of it. Not so much about this. It just isn't the way I wanted it to be. How did you want it? I don't know. A real wedding with a bridal gown in a church. A real wedding. You've got to be an actress. You've got to dress up for the part. Well, look, I don't have time to play games. There's a war going on. Darling, who's being dramatic now? All right, look, I've spent a long, long time planning this. Do you want to marry me or not? You have no right to talk to me like that. You do or you don't. Not if you put it like a, a threat. That's or... all I wanted to know. Bill? Change your mind? No, I haven't. If you go on acting like this, I won't. You won't have to watch the way I act.
Bill. What happened, Mary? I never saw him again. His family told me that he'd canceled his leave and shipped out. Three months later, he was leading a patrol. The entire patrol was overrun. If I'd married him and if it stayed those two weeks, everything would have been different, but I sent him away. I killed him. I killed him. I went on working as an actress. I couldn't forget him. I couldn't forget him. So if you want a sink that sparkles like diamonds, get Outspot. Good for your kitchen, good for your bathroom, and good. Very good for your hands. Get out, Spot. You'll be glad that you did. Thanks, Mary. All right, Fred, take the roll, then. The ceasefire is official. The truce terms were signed at Panmunjom today at 2 p.m. Korean time. After 37 months and two days of war, the guns are stilled. Here in San Francisco, there were some spontaneous outbursts of rejoicing, but, as in the rest of the country, celebration is dampened by the memory of the 142,000 dead, wounded, or missing Americans who paid the price of that war. In a message, Ellen and George are coming over to the apartment tonight. Ellen's fixing spaghetti. Mary? What? Oh, I can't. I'm meeting someone. Ellen's fixing it specially for you. Okay, Mary. I promise not to ask questions, and I won't. I got you an audition with Bailey for a series tomorrow. I was going to surprise you with it tonight. 10.30 here. I can't. Can't. Are you crazy? This could be the chance you've been waiting for. The chance for a good daily show. Please, Tom. Not now. I can't. I couldn't forget it. I couldn't forget it. I couldn't forget it. Yes, Mrs. Harris, we have your reservation. Oh, my husband's plane has been delayed. He won't be here until after 7 o'clock. Very well, Mrs. Harris. And also, there will be some packages delivered here soon. Would you have them sent to the room? Certainly. 1227. This is Mrs. Harris in 1227. I'd like to order dinner. Well, to start with, I want two bottles of champagne, the best you have, and a Caesar salad for two, and my husband likes steak, medium rare. Oh, I want, uh, I want some spaghetti. Thank you. Where's your husband? You know what this is about. Get your clothes and come on down to headquarters. Your own clothes. I don't know. I don't remember. I told you everything I know. You don't remember. You passed 21 phony checks in a couple of hours yesterday afternoon. I can understand how you might forget a few of them. Who is Lieutenant Harris? He stood you up, let you get the merchandise, and then didn't show. You admit the forgeries? 
want to tell us where we can find Harris? He doesn't exist. Yes? My name is Mary Fletcher. I'm to see Mrs. Carlson. I've just come from the prison. Hello there, Mary. Glad to see you. Come into my office through here. Get right down there. Relax. I expect you're glad to be out. Yes. Yes, I certainly am. You served 18 months and a two and a half year sentence. Good record at the institution. I'm to be your parole officer for the next year, so we might as well get to know each other. Have any trouble getting here? No. It's just that I... I guess I'm nervous. Every girl goes through the same thing when she first comes out. Uh, Mrs. Maxwell discussed your uh, employment and living plan with you. She told me all about the restaurant. Will they know that I'm a... that I'm on parole? The manager, yes, since we made the arrangements, but no one else. That's the first thing to learn, Mary. Don't anticipate trouble. Oh, she also told me about living at the YWCA and that I'm to go on working as a waitress. I can't go back to my own work. You're an actress, weren't you? Radio and television. No. Nothing that places you before the public. And you won't be permitted to write or speak about your prison experiences, Mary. Not while you're on parole. Some of these restrictions might seem unfair. Girls get confused by them. Parole is a privilege. You were sentenced to two and a half years. You're simply serving the last year outside the prison. They told us that at the pre-parole classes. Usually I talk to girls about what they should wear, but with your background, I know I needn't go into that. And about this forgery charge that got your sentence? Please, Mrs. Carlson, I don't want to talk about it. I, I can't. I'm not prying, Mary. I'm trying to help. You're certainly not a professional criminal. Where I've just come from, that's an insult. Was it just that you wanted good clothes, wanted to feel rich? Or do you remember how you felt? I told you everything. Everything's in my record. I don't know why I did it. All right, Mary, I'll drive you over to your room and get you settled. Will I have to stay here all the time I'm on parole? I mean, it's nice, but... But you'd like an apartment of your own. When you can afford it and find a place you like, I'll check it and give you an okay. Thanks, Mrs. Carlson. Feel a little lost? Don't let it bother you. The girls tell me getting out's worse than going in. Freedom takes getting used to. It's a funny thought, but that's just how I feel. Sure. You haven't had to think for yourself in almost two years. You have to get used to not asking permission every time you want to do something. Of course, there are still a few things you have to ask me. Let me know how you get along in the job tomorrow. Remember to make your regular weekly calls. I'll drop in on you from time to time just to see how you're getting along. If you have any special problems, call me. I will, but uh, about your coming to the restaurant, um, won't it seem kind of bad uh, to the people I'm working with? I drive a plain car. I don't wear a uniform. Now, my feet wouldn't do for a ballerina, but I really don't think I look too much like a cop. Well, I didn't mean that exactly. Of course you did, and I don't blame you. We try to do our job, but we also try not to embarrass you. A lot of my girls introduce me as a friend or a member of the family if they have to explain. Why don't you go out and see a movie? Don't just sit around here. You've been inside long enough. Well, thank you, Mrs. Carlson. Good luck. January 18th, field contact, restaurant, job satisfactory. Manager seems pleased with parolee's work. February 19th, no contact restaurant. Mary home with a cold, verified at home with influenza. March 21st, phone contact. Mary returned to job, recovered. March 9th, office contact. Parolee shows start of savings account. Progress, excellent. March 27th, field contact. Hello? 
wrong, Mrs. Carlson? Black, no sugar. How's everything? Any problems? Oh, everything's just fine. I have some good news. At least I think I do. Gloria, the hostess here, is leaving. She's getting married. Well, Mr. Winfield said I might have a chance at the job. I was wondering if it'd help if you spoke to him for me. You're doing fine by yourself. Leave me out of it. I'm very proud of you, Mary. Thanks, Mrs. Carlson. You've been wonderful to me. Um, why did you choose to be a parole officer? I mean, what made you decide on a job like this? It's a living. Well, that isn't the reason. With your background and training, I, I bet you make less than I do as a waitress. Maybe I just hate money. Well, do you have any children? But you are married. I was. Sorry. He was killed in Italy. It was a long time ago. He was a lawyer in the district attorney's office. And in the war, even lawyers get killed. Hey, I'm supposed to listen to your problems. Not that you have any. Let me know about the new job, the important things that you're doing so well, that you've made such a wonderful readjustment. Mary? I better get back to work. A little something, Mrs. Carlson. Florence, you know the rules. Thanks, though. Oh, but that's not like a bribe or anything dishonest. That's to eat. It's a rule. How are you getting on? Well, I went to that place you said about the job, and the man thought I wasn't the type for it. But he wanted me to go out with him. I didn't, though. So now me and Mother are making this hook rug for our floor. You know, out of old clothes and stuff. I'm sorry about the job, but... Hello? Mary, where are you? All right, stay there, don't move. Mary, do you hear me? Just sit right there and stop being hysterical. Oh, Florence, we'll have to figure out a job you're the type for. In the meantime, you just keep right on with that hook rug. Why? You must have known. Even if you hadn't called me, it was only a matter of time before you would have been caught. What did you think would happen? I don't know. What do you think will happen now? I'll go back to prison. That's what I deserve. We'll see about that. I must say, you've got good taste in clothes. I'm taking you down to jail. You think about the best way to handle this and why you did it. I'll do some thinking, too. I've got her in the county jail on suspicion of parole violation. I can hold her 72 hours without filing. Sending her back to prison won't solve anything. If it would, we'd have no need for parole. If we had more psychiatric help at the institution, it would be different, but we haven't. And that's what she needs. She turned herself in. She hasn't touched any of the merchandise. It's all recoverable. And the Stores Protective Association have agreed not to prosecute. I admit they didn't like it, but they agreed. So many of our girls need psychiatric help. Why do you think this one's special? Because, well, basically she is special. I'm sure this girl can be helped. At least I'm sure it's worth a try. With your permission, I'd like to continue her parole status. Punishing yourself by deliberately flaunting the law, getting yourself arrested. The fine clothes you wanted for your wedding, the champagne you didn't have with him, even the hotel where you were to stay. I killed him. You both acted childishly. What happened isn't your fault. It wasn't his. We lost a lot of men in Korea, but their deaths weren't the fault of women who didn't marry them. You have your own life to live, Mary. Torturing yourself won't bring him back. I love him. Where I stand, I think you've done a wonderful job. How do you feel about it? Well, she's gained a good deal of insight in these past few months. Learned to face reality. I don't think you'll have any more trouble. Good. She finishes her parole next month. 
I'll see her a couple of times more. There are a few minor things we haven't worked through. The manager of the restaurant tells me she's the best hostess he ever had. She's had two raises. I appreciate what you've done, Vic. You're very fond of this girl, aren't you? The daughter you never had. You know, I felt from the start you were making a personal identification with... Now, look. Don't try to get me as a patient. I'm doing all right as I am. Leave well enough alone. There, yeah, that copy stays with us, and that's yours. And there's your gold seal. That makes you a free woman, Mary, a citizen again. Will you go back to acting now? Well, I don't know. I'm happy where I am. I don't think I'll make a change just yet. And being in the restaurant business has certain advantages over acting. You can always eat. <laughs> but the uh, main advantage in being off parole is I can see you now as a friend. This is a chapter of your life that's closed, and I'm part of that chapter. The best thing you can do is to forget all about it. Make a new life for yourself. Mary. Mary! Stop it! You've gotten over that. The memory's behind you. Forget it. Forget about him. Forget me. Forget prison and parole. That's the best favor you can do me and yourself. Thank you, Mrs. Carlson. Hello, girls. Good morning. Morning, Sally. Have a nice weekend. I sure did. I slept. Oh, oh Mrs. Carlson, about that last job you sent me. Florence, on. there's just got to be something you're the type for. We'll figure out what it is. Wait till I check my mail. under the door this morning. Lieutenant and Mrs. William Harris request the honor of your presence for luncheon at the Tower Hotel at 12 o'clock. She's not your responsibility any longer. She's off parole. I'd better go. After all, she never sent out invitations before. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm too late. You better let me in, Mary. When was the last time you saw Dr. Banner? Well, I don't know, a week or more ago. So much has happened. It certainly has. Hello. I'm Bill Harris. Harris? But I thought you were... Dead? I spent two years, nine months, and 28 days in a prison camp. There were times when I thought so, too. I'm Edith Carlson. I'm Mary's aunt. I just dropped by. It's all right, Mrs. Carlson. Bill knows all about me. Mm, and I know all about you. Mary talks of nothing else. I told Bill everything. I don't want there to be any more misunderstandings. Ever. We understand each other perfectly. After all, you know, I was in prison, too. you to be with us again next week when the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware will again present the DuPont Cavalcade Theater.